use recovery console from a hard drive installation. Okay, now when this menu pops up, it's asking us do we want to set up Windows or do we want to repair a Windows XP ins installation? In this case, we'll select R for recovery console. Now, some repairs you would all actually select install, but you would just do what's simply called a, a file system rebuild, and you would tell Windows not to overwrite your existing operating system. In this case, we're logged in here. Um, on our XP machine, these are the files and things that we have. Um, I'm just typing in DOS commands, but if I were to type in help, I could get a listing of all of the recovery console commands available to me. The ones we're particularly interested in are fix boot, fix MBR, um, chk, dsk, and the disk part tool. Um, list services is also very useful, but if I were going to rebuild the master boot record, then I would simply say In this case, this is a virtual machine, but if the drive was there, then it would be able to find it. Now, a couple other tools we'll look at. We're going to do some partitioning. There's a disk partitioning tool. Escape, cancel out of there. Um, list services. We'll list the services. In this case. I'm going to list any services or my startup file. You have the standard OS commands. Enable and disable. I can enable or disable services if they were preventing me from booting. And I could run chkdsk from a command prompt. And again, that would enable me to repair any problems that I might have. Okay, now this is on a virtual machine, so what you see would probably be a, a, a bit different. A trib, a trib, the tool you see at the top there, will allow you to modify attributes on a file. If it's hidden, you can make it, you know, showable. Boot CFG is another good one. See how that runs on a virtual machine here. And in this case, if, if my boot INI file were damaged or I had repartitioned my drive with a tool like uh, Partition Magic or Distrude or something, such that it became unbootable or the boot INI file pointed to the wrong partition, this would let me scan and rebuild um, all of the partitions. And it would you know allow me to recreate or repair a damaged boot INI file. So here, these are some of the helpful tools that you could get from Recovery Console. And I'm just going to exit and reboot here. This time we won't boot from the CD. We'll go into Windows XP normally. Skip checking on that volume. Save a little bit of time. Let's do local login workstation only. We'll log into XP. Now, if I wanted to, I could also add that to my hard drive. And the way to do that. I would browse into my XP CD. I would go to this folder and I'm going to select the name of the program and hit command console cmd cons excuse me make that 32 there and it'll ask me if I want to install 
Do you want to install a recovery console? Let's see, yes. And we'll skip the dynamic update there, save some time. And it's going to copy files from the Windows XP CD, or the CD I spin up. This will actually modify my boot on I file and add an entry there. Now, if for some reason my drive became too corrupt to boot, but I could still at least reach my startup you know, menu, even if I maybe not were able to reach NT loader or the bootloader or anything, then maybe I could use this from the hard drive. And it would certainly load a lot quicker. So let's take a look at that. And now see that on the boot menu, it's actually added to the menu when I reboot to go into XP. Recovery console, and then there's Windows XP Professional. So, okay. Went to look at another tool I like to use called Erd Commander. It's sort of like the Fedora, Fedora Core 6 Live or Ubuntu 7 Feisty Fun Live CD. You, you can boot right off the CD. There's a scaled down version of the XP kernel. So you can run it right off the CD. It's got some useful programs in it. You can mount the NTFS file systems and copy files if you need to rescue data. You can modify boot INI files or startup files, INI files. You can modify the registry. You can restore files to a hard drive. It's got a very neat utility in it called Locksmith that will let you modify the, you know, basically the, the password of any user account on the system. And that's very useful for several reasons. Somebody may have changed their password and forgotten what it was, or you might end up with an old computer and nobody knows whose it was and nobody remembers the password, but for some reason the data is still important. More often than not, someone will give you a computer of theirs to fix either in the office or maybe friend or family or you know some employee of the organization and of course they always always uh, forget to give you the password so this is a tool that will kind of let you pick the lock so to speak and there are plenty of free NT password crackers out there on the net most of them Linux based um, that will actually let you you know steal the password or read the password or you know attempt to decrypt it one of the things I like about this utility is that um, it doesn't really give you any liability because it doesn't tell you what their password is. It just simply lets you change it to either a password or no password or you know something that you can use to log in and fix the computer. And then when you give it back to them, you can simply set it to no password or to something simple like pass or password and tell them, look, I don't know what your old password was. I didn't read it, didn't save it, didn't write it down. I'm not liable for it. So they're free to change it back to their old password, whatever it was, and that way, um, it, you know, you're kind of not stepping out of bounds, and you know that allows them to maintain their privacy and their security. Um, you know, actually keeping a password for too long is not a good idea anyway, but you know, some people prefer to do that. So this would let you give them that option. Um, it doesn't actually reveal the password; it just lets you modify or change the password. And here are the tools, and here, here's Locksmith, and that would let me change the password. System info, you know, I can open up Explorer and be able to look at the files on the system. And if I had to do any type of data recovery, I could do that. That's just another useful tool. When I'm done, I would log off. 